Hi, I'm Mario Batali, and I'm here at the residences at the beautiful Phoenician in Scottsdale, Arizona. I took a little time off in the middle of my book tour to show you exactly what I love about the Italian grill. The first thing that's really interesting to me is something called a piastra. A piastra, or cooking a la piastra, refers to cooking on an iron or flat granite surface over the open fire. The thing is to let, get it really smoking hot because what you really want it to happen is to make it pop. We're going to take these mussels and we're going to cook them by adding a few ingredients that's going to enhance the flavor of them and create kind of this toasty, bready richness that makes them really, really delicious. The dish was born in Liguria, Italy, so this is the Italian grill. We're going to take perfect mussels. We've de-bearded them. There's nothing to them. We're going to take a little bit of breadcrumbs that I've mixed with a little prosciutto. If you didn't have prosciutto, you could use ham or you could use a little bit of bacon. The trick is to add just a little bit of porkiness to it. Take about three quarters of a cup. Then we're going to take some scallions that I've sliced thin. And we're going to take jalapenos. I like it relatively zippy, so this is probably two or three. If you wanted a little less, you could delete them completely, or you could use a little red chili flakes if you had those around the house. Then take some lemon zest, actually about half that, some orange zest, the juice of one lemon and the juice of one orange, and then toss the whole thing around like this so that you get it nice and mixed up. The most important thing to the whole dish is going to be to allow those breadcrumbs to kind of toast right on the piastra itself. So it brings out this rich kind of almost burnt, deep, dark, golden bread flavor. And that's what I'm really looking for. And that, in effect, becomes really the sauce for the mussels. It's really the entire condiment package. So what you do is you get your piastra really hot. Toss these mussels like this, then we're going to pop it right on top and allow them to just do their game. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop them on there. And you're going to hear them dance. Now that's the sound of the kind of liquid that's in there with the juices and the mussels and all that great toasty stuff happening. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that on top of there and allow it to cook for about a minute. Now they're going to pop, they're going to open. If mussels don't open, as with any shellfish, if they do not open, you just discard them. But they will all kind of open up very quickly. The beauty of great shellfish cookery is to not overcook them. So it's just as soon as they're started to steam open a little bit, that's exactly where you want to be. Now you just kind of drag them through, and as you can see, a couple of them are coming to the finish already. So you pull them off as they go. You leave the breadcrumbs on there. You kind of want them to kind of almost scorch is the idea behind that. And you can hear them popping. That's what we like. I'm a big fan of the audio component of cooking. You can tell a lot more hearing something cook than sometimes you can when you're watching it. So now they're coming up, popping open just barely. This is exactly as we want them. You can start to smell that kind of toasty, burnt bread flavor. That's ideal. Now they're almost all done. What I'm going to do is now get that kind of crust that's developed and pop them right on top like that. At this point, when you want to clean it when you're done here, you just leave it on the grill with the uh, lid down and allow it to scorch. And then just scrape it off with a dough scraper or a, or a heavy-duty spatula. Want to make sure you get those little toasted jalapenos at the last second. Put them on like that. Finish it with a little zest and a little scallions. And there you have it. Perfect mussels a la piastra. The beauty of the piastra is that you can cook a variety of foods. You can put meats, you can put shellfish, you can do flatbreads, you can do vegetables, anything you want. One of my favorite dishes is something called bracciole. So I take a tenderloin, I season it, and then I put all of the traditional ingredients to the bracciole inside of it and then grill it by putting it onto the piastra on the hot flame and kind of searing all of that stuff so you get a nice crust but a delicious kind of molten center. So what you do is you take toasted breadcrumbs. I would beseech you all to make your own breadcrumbs. You take bread, you grind it up, you put it in the oven and you toast it, and you get this kind of deep, rich, toasty bread smell and something that's got a little bit more distinct texture. That's what I like. Then Parmigiano Reggiano, the indisputed king of cheeses. Fontina, or you could use whatever else you have around the house. I'm a big fan of provolone in this example, but the fontina kind of adds a little mysterious touch to it. And then you take the best salami you can get, have them slice it thin at the deli, and then cut it into little julienne matchstick strips like that. 
little bit of fresh garlic, I'd say about a clove and a half, some parsley. At this point, it's kind of your dish, so you could add a little oregano, you could add some marjoram, you could add whatever you want, but you want to add just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to kind of bind it. And keep in mind, extra virgin olive oil can be expensive, but really, if you're only using a tablespoon or two, it doesn't cost that much to greatly improve your life. So now I'm going to take the tenderloin, and I'm going to aggressively season it. just with a little bit of salt, and then I'm going to mix up these ingredients. So we're going to take that tenderloin, and then we're just going to roll it up like a pinwheel. It's very important that you get that pinwheel feel. You don't want to just fold it over. We're looking for it to look kind of like a jelly donut. So I make sure that I roll it nicely so that I get meat and then the filling, and then meat and then the filling, and that's really kind of crucial. Then you take the string, and you just tie it into pieces. Now, if you're worried about getting the tenderloin just the right way, ask your butcher to do a trick called butterflying. When you butterfly a tenderloin, all they do is they basically take it and they open it up lengthwise like this, which is effectively what I did before we started here. Now, we're going to add a couple of strings. What you want to keep in mind when you're tying this is when you're going to cut between this, so it's going to decide on the thickness or the size of your portion. It's important to realize that if you want to cook it more quickly, you put more strings, and that means you're going to have a little thinner of a slice when it's done. You trim the strings, and then at this point, you can put it in the fridge and let it sit for two or three days, as long as it's well, well chilled and well wrapped, until your guests get there. When they're ready, or when you're ready to eat, then you take it like this and just slice straight down. See that beautiful pinwheel? That means we're living large. Then what you do is you give them a quick little flat down and drizzle them with a little oil. Now the piastra has been heating, but what you want to do before you use your piastra on the very first time is brush it with a little olive oil and let it sit on the heat for a half hour so that it gets kind of seasoned. But when you're using the piastra, you don't want to necessarily put oil on it so that you get a fry pan factor. What you really want to do is put the oil on the product that you're going to put on there so that it doesn't become that kind of fried, crispy, oily thing. Then you season it again with a little salt. So now the piastra is smoking hot. It's got those little bubbles there. That is a thing of beauty. You take the nicely oiled but not over oiled meat, pop it right on there. I would say when I've left this getting nice and hot for about 15 minutes and the grill is on high, I should be looking at something that's going to take probably four to five minutes on the side. What you do to accelerate that and to also add just a little bit more of the smoky flavor is with the gas grill, you drop the lid down. If it wasn't a gas grill, you would leave the lid up or not covered at all. So. At about four minutes in, you just take a nice spatch, give it a flip over, see how that cheese has kind of oozed out a little bit, but it's not slipping through the grill. You could cook this on the grill, but what you're going to get is this almost Florentine cookie-like crispness by allowing the stuff to ooze out and then cook right here on the piastra. And that is, in fact, the beauty of the piastra. So now it's been there, it's just about right for me. Perfect beef temperature for something that's going to be cooked like this is about 125, 130 internal. If you're worried about it, get a meat thermometer or just get used to kind of poking it around like that. I'm going to take a little bit more toasted breadcrumbs with a little bit of the salami. Sprinkle that over the top with just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You could serve this with a nice crack of fresh black pepper and even just a little bit of barbecue sauce if you wanted to wreck it on the side. I wouldn't touch this at all. Leave it just like this. Bon appetito. Now, another excellent use for a piastra is to actually use flatbreads or pizza dough. Remember, you start with your piastra, which is a granite stone that you cook right on top of the fire. You get it nice and hot. The first time you use it, you oil it down just a little bit, and after that, you pretty much just scrape it. You wash it if you really torch something on it, but you really don't need to very often. You can just scrape it by allowing it to stay on there, kind of torching everything off. What you do is you take pizza bread of your own design, pizza dough, or you go to the pizzeria and buy some. That's the beauty of this dish, is that no matter what, it's not complicated. Then you roll it out to a shape just about the size of your piastra because you don't want it too thick, but again, you don't want it too thin. This is not a crisp dough 
This is going to be kind of a bready dough. The dish is called schiacciata, which literally means crushed or flattened down. It's a traditional harvest dish from Tuscany where they make these flatbreads and cook them on the piastra or sometimes even in the pizza oven and they celebrate the harvest of the fresh grapes that they're going to use to make wine and a little bit of fennel. So this is kind of a sweet but mostly savory kind of a dish. Now I'm not going to oil this at all. I'm just going to go straight to the piastra for the first step. My piastra has been oiled. It's got that beautiful kind of smoky crust going on and that's what I like. So we just flap it on like that. Now that's going to cook for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to take it off and show you exactly what we're going to do with it. So now the bread's got a nice puffiness going to it. It's just about a nice dark golden brown on the base. Now we take it off and we just allow it to come back to its own natural shape. That is to say it loses a little bit of that air. It's still a little rare on the inside. That's what we like. And now we're going to take the topping. We're going to take extra virgin olive oil because of course as you're familiar with Olive oil is harvested right after the grapes. So this will be the new oil or olio nuovo. Then we're going to take some fennel seeds. Not too many. Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions about Italian food is that abbondanza is great. That everything in more quantity is better. In fact, it's really about balance. So now I'm going to take grapes. Red table grapes are fine. If you could find Concord grapes or any kind of wine grape, if you're lucky enough to have access to something from any one of the beautiful vineyards all over America. And you put quite a few on here because it's going to give you that beautiful kind of popping fresh grape, barely cooked kind of thing. And then you take a good amount of coarse salt. And as you can tell already, this dish is a killer. And then we take it right back to the grill. So you pick it up with your spatula, put it right on top of the piastra, and close that puppy down. This will be about two minutes more. That'll have this kind of beautiful, fresh, grapey flavor. So now it's got a nice kind of griddly char from the piastra on the base. It's got a nice kind of dry texture on the top. And the grapes have just started to cook, so they're in great shape. Then what you want to do is just take your pizza cutter and cut it into what us cooks refer to as fancy shapes. Most of them are based on either three or four sides. Then you just serve it up like that. Make a little pile of it, open up the Chianti, and we are partying with the Piastra Tuscan style. And you serve it up to your buddies, and these are just a few of the great recipes that you can cook on the Piastra when you're cooking on the Italian grill. Pizza's been around for centuries. Flatbreads, focaccia, schiacciata, all great dishes. The reason they're delicious is because they're cooked on the right surface. We have a pizza grilling stone, a two-piece piece of equipment that actually allows you to get that kind of brick oven texture, which is what we're looking for, right on top of the grill. So basically, you're going to take your pizza dough, and you could have made it, or you could have bought it. If you made it, you make sure you allow it to rise, pop it down, and then rise again. That's the quality greatness of a beautiful yeast dough. And then you're going to make it into a classic pizza. We're going to make a margarita, perhaps the most important pizza, named after the Queen of Italy on her first visit to Naples. And we're going to flatten it down. And basically, you only need to use your hands. You, you build the cornice, which is this frame around the outside. I don't like it too thick, but I like it to have just a little bit of relief from the sauce because I'm always very happy about eating the pizza bread. Then you flatten it out. Not too thin. This isn't going to be super crisp, but what it's going to have because of its contact with the pizza grilling stone is that beautiful kind of crisp texture on the bottom or on the back. And that's what I'm really looking for. It's a two-step process. We're going to start by grilling the bread the first time through. And then I'm going to take it off and I'm going to dress it and then put it back on. So we get that kind of almost charred, crispy texture on the bottom. And the, the smoke of it actually being inside our grill is going to give it that kind of brick oven flavor. And that's what we really, really like. So you flatten it out with your hands. If you wanted to roll it out, that's fine. If you bought them already done, that's fine. The trick is just making sure that you get it really nice and hot. So we've allowed it to sit in there for about 15 minutes. And now we're ready to take it to the grill. 
I haven't done anything to this. I haven't oiled it. You don't need to. You just need to keep scraping it off. If you oil it too much, it gets a little sticky. For your first use, though, you're going to want to have oiled it just a little bit and allowed it to cook through so you don't get that very first mark to be a mark. And you just pop it on. And once you've set it there, that's exactly where it's going to be. I'm going to close this down for about 30 seconds and then pull it right off and dress it. So now the first side's cooked, it's puffed up, it's got a good start to it. It's got a deep, dark, golden crust, that's exactly where I want it. Now you dress it. You could make pizza Bianca, you could make pepperoni pizza, but for me the best thing is to take just a little simple, perfect tomato sauce. And again, remember, some of the best things about Italian food is not really doing the whole abundanza gig. A perfect pizza is just barely dressed. You want enough stuff on there to keep it interesting, but remember that the most important flavor is that of that kind of smoky grill and that beautiful toasted wheat, the flavor of the actual dough itself. Then I'm going to take a little mozzarella. Buy the best fresh mozzarella you can. I recommend that you buy it from Campania, which is Italy, in and around the Naples area under the shadow of Vesuvius. Again, remember, that abundanza thing is super important. Don't put too much cheese on, especially when you're using a good fresh mozzarella di bufala, because it's actually kind of wet. It's got a lot of water content. And that's basically it. You drizzle it with just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And this is going to happen just like you're in your Neapolitan pizzeria. It's really going to cook in just about a minute and a half or two minutes. You don't want to overcook it, but you certainly don't want to eat raw pizza. So now we move it to the grill, drop it on the pizza grilling stone, and close it down for about a minute and a half. Well, I'm going to say it looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, the reason that this exists in a two-piece situation is you have the cast iron base around it that lifts it up off so you get a nice even distribution of heat, which makes for the crust to be really delicious and crispy brown on the bottom while fully cooked through on the top. And that distribution is crucial to the success of a good pizza. So now we pop it off like this. It may stick a little, that's no worry. And then right over to the landing board. Now at this point you could put hot peppers on it, you could put other kinds of things on it. A nice little trick for this is also maybe a little fresh prosciutto and a little arugula. But for me the real classic is just that beautiful triumvirate of mozzarella, basil, and tomatoes. Now you can hear it. Oh yes. There we go on my audio fix again. That crunchy sound of going through is the sound of a pizza party about to happen. And there you have it. Crisp brick oven Neapolitan style pizza right off the barbecue in your pizza grilling stone. One of my favorite ways to use the pizza grilling stone is to create a dish called focaccina. Focaccia is the traditional puffy bread using a pizza-like dough from Genoa. But what I like to do is actually stuff it. So we take that same pizza dough and just flatten it out so that we can get it into something that's going to look a little bit longer than a pizza and maybe a little bit on the regular side, but something that we're just going to flatten out so that we can get it because we're eventually going to make kind of a long like sandwich out of it. So you kind of coax it into its right spot using your fingers only. If you were worried a little bit, you could use a rolling pin, but you don't have to. And you roll it out like that, get it to it's nice and flat and relatively consistent, and then you heat up your pizza stone in its two-piece magnificence and get ready to throw it right on there. I'm not oiling the bread. I haven't oiled the pizza stone. It's just real simple, flat on bread on bread on flat. So now it just goes flat on the grill, right on the pizza stone, I do it like that, make sure I give it that nice little advantage like that, and I literally close it for 30 seconds. So we're cooking it just about half the way through because we're going to actually stuff it. So now I flip it and close it again. Another 30 seconds. So now it's taken its delicious breath of the hot grill air, and now we're just going to let it settle. All right, now that it's cool enough that you can actually get your hands on it, you take a nice serrated blade and you effectively split it. 
If you do it right at the end of the puffing process, it's easy to do. If you tear it, it's no big deal, nothing to worry about. But what you want to do is just open that whole baby up because we're going to stuff it. So you flip it open like so. And then you take whatever ingredients you want. In this case, we're going to take sweet, delicious, magnificent, and poetic puree of roasted garlic. You take whole cloves of whole heads of garlic and basically roast them for 35 to 45 minutes, then allow them to cool, and then just smush out the liquid gold on the inside. Keep in mind at this point, if you're going to want to make out with someone, you're going to want them to have the exact same amount of garlic that you have. So we smear that down like that. Then we sprinkle just a little bit of chopped rosemary. Rosemary is quite powerful, so you don't want to put too much. Then you take some scallions. And at this point, you could put anything. If you wanted to put prosciutto in here, prosciutto mozzarella, sun-dried tomatoes, black olives, anything. It's almost the same as a, a pizza topping. Then I'm going to take a little provolone. This is kind of a young, delicious cheese from the south of Italy that's relatively, it's called semi-soft. That, what that means is it's going to melt beautifully. What's really important is, again, don't put too much of anything on there. And always finish it with just a couple of drops of extra virgin olive oil. Then what you do is you flop it back over, close it up, and give it just a little bit of pressure. And then we're going to pop it back on top of the pizza grilling stone and cook it until everything's just crisp and melted. About three minutes, maybe four. But it's better to do a little bit more than a little too less. Lid down. So now it's beautifully crisp, delicately charred, magnificently flavored, and ready to eat. Allow it to rest as long as you possibly can, which in my house is about three seconds. And then cut it and dig on. This is a delicious, seemingly original classic from the Italian grill. One of my favorite things to eat and something you can easily make at home, provided you get the pizza grilling stone and the piastra. And there you have it, something truly delicious that you can make in your own house. The beauty of the piastra is it allows you to cook a variety of foods on the grill. In addition to meat and shellfish, it makes delicious flatbreads and is great for vegetables. Before you cook on the piastra, which is a granite stone that you cook right on top of the fire, you get it nice and hot. The first time you use it, you oil it down just a little bit. And after that, you let it sit on the heat for a half hour so that it gets kind of seasoned. And after that, you pretty much just scrape it. You wash it if you really torch something on it, but you really don't need to very often. You can just scrape it by allowing it to stay on there, kind of torching everything off. One way to cook flatbreads on the grill is with a pizza stone. Pizza, being a type of flatbread, has been around for centuries, but grilling pizza gives it a unique flavor that tastes like it came from a brick oven pizzeria. This item, the pizza grilling stone, is two pieces, a stone that fits right into a cast iron frame. When you're using the pizza stone on the grill, the cast iron frame allows the heat to circulate around the stone for even heating. Here's how it works. First, preheat the stone on the grill for about 10 or 15 minutes. You can use your own pizza dough or purchase pre-made dough from a local pizzeria. If you prepare your own from scratch, make sure to allow plenty of time for it to rise. One of the nice features of the stone is that you don't need to wash it after every use, and it can become an extension of your grill. In fact, be sure not to use soap on the stone because it will be absorbed into the porous surface and could eventually affect the flavor of your foods. I want to give some special thanks to the Luxury Collections Phoenician Resort, my friends at Copco, and especially you coming down and checking it out.